Lately, the news has been pretty scary. We have North Korea saying that they are going to nuke Guam sometime next week. We have the U.S. saying, we'll nuke you back, basically, or we'll do one better. We'll do a preemptive strike. So, you know, I grew up in the Cold War, so it was always out there, but this is kind of scary. It really is. And it makes me think I want to make sure I have all my preps in order. So one of the things I think many, many preppers have is this Iostat, right? These are potassium iodide pills, um, also known as K1, which is the chemical element. And I thought today I'd talk a little bit about what are these, what can they do for you, who should take them, and who should take them. Now, I first have to give, of course, a disclaimer. Believe it or not, I am not a nuclear physicist, nor am I a medical doctor, and nor do I play one on YouTube. So, this is just research that I've done. As always, do your own research and come up with materials you trust from sources you trust. But I thought I'd share with you what I found out. You do not need a prescription to get these potassium iodide pills because they are a supplement. Now, I believe they're like $14 or something for a 14-day adult supply on Amazon. It used to be cheaper, but I'm sure the market has made the price go up. But what are they? Well, it's really stable iodine. It's a salt. Now, it is not the same as the salt you used that is iodized salt. This is a little different and it's called stable salt or potassium iodide. So what do they prevent? How do they work? Well, first you need to know a little bit about your thyroid gland, which I think is located about here. And that gland is very important because it produces all the hormones that control the metabolism in your various cells. But guess what? In order to produce those hormones, it needs iodine. That's right. Now, before we had, you know, the nation says we're going to add iodine to our salt, um, those of us in the north could have had problems developing a goiter. And that's kind of a growth right here. Looks like another Adam's apple. Um, because we weren't getting sufficient iodine. So nowadays, that generally doesn't happen unless you have a thyroid disease. So what do these pills do? Well, your thyroid gland absorbs, like I said, iodine. Now, it doesn't know the difference between radioactive iodine being released by a nuclear accident or stable iodine. And it only has so much capacity. So kind of think of your thyroid gland as a gas tank. And what you want to do is fill it up with a stable potassium iodide as opposed to having it being full of the radioactive iodide. So when you take these is important, how often you take them is important, and how close you are to a nuclear accident, of course for your exposure. So what are you preventing by taking these pills? Well, hopefully you're preventing thyroid cancer. And this can be developed five years after um, exposure to radiation or 20 years after. Now, please remember, as long as we have our current medical system, thyroid cancer, as long as it's caught in the early stage, is a pretty curable cancer. But Hopefully, these will help you from ever developing it if you aren't too close to a nuclear accident and you take them as directed. Now, that radioactive iodine is also known as I-31. It's an isotope. It is invisible and you can't hear it. So it comes through the air and wind can carry it and you're absorbing it and you're inhaling it. And that's one of the ways you can get it into your thyroid. But you can also get it by the food you're eating, the water you're drinking, the milk you're drinking, can become contaminated from a nuclear event. So, 
It isn't just being far enough away from nuclear event. You have to be careful that what you're eating and drinking isn't contaminated. Now, I need to say, there's many, many things that can happen from a nuclear event. Just taking this pill is not going to prevent you. You know, you're not going to live through a nuclear event. If you're too close, of course, you'll just blow up, right? Uh, or uh, you look at it and it burns your retina, so you are blind. Or, um, again, it depends on your proximity, but basically your skin almost melts off, or you have terrible, terrible burns and blisters. Or a couple weeks down the road, your basically your innards start going to mush because of radiation exposure. So this is only to help you from developing thyroid cancer. You want to follow other precautions if you are exposed to radiation or you are near a nuclear event. And that's a whole nother video. Now let's talk about who should take these pills. Well, if you have a limited supply, you might have to ration them. So, if you have a pregnant woman, you give her one pill first because the fetus developing is at the most susceptible to thyroid damage. You also want to give it to infants and very young children because again, their thyroid is still developing. It's much more susceptible. And your next would be your teenagers. And then if you have enough, your 18 to 40 year olds. Now, past the age of 40, you have less likely uh, chance of developing thyroid cancer from radiation exposure. And if you're over 60, you have a lot less likely chance. Now, part of that depends, of course, on how close you are and how much you are exposed. But you wanna look at that if you only have maybe one of these and you're waiting for the government to give you more then decide who you give your pills to by their age basically that's what you're looking at now as far as your dosage goes you want to keep the pills in this little cellophane package because in it is the instructions on how much to give the package has 14 one day supply of pills for an adult an adult is taking one pill a day. You know, your infant may be one-fourth of a pill smooshed up and put in the formula. Um, a small child may be a half a pill. But don't, don't rely on me. Check on what this says. It's really important to follow the dosage. Now, who should take these pills? Well, I'm not going to tell anybody they shouldn't take them, but you need to know that there can be problems. Number one, if you're over 60, maybe you don't need to take them. Number two is, do you suffer from any other condition? For instance, I'm over 60. I also have hypothyroidism. I'm not a good candidate for them. Um, so if you suffer from any thyroid disease, you'd want to check with your doctor. And if you have Graves disease and some other diseases. So, the time to check with your doctor, of course, would be now. Once you have a nuclear event, I don't think you're gonna be able to get your doctor online and say, hey doc, should I be taking these potassium iodide pills? So think ahead if, any, if you have any of these conditions. Now, some people think because you are allergic to shellfish that you can't take iodine. That isn't necessarily true. Again, you might wanna to talk to your allergist and determine if you could take these pills if there was such an event. And the reason why you wanna be careful taking these pills, especially if you have to take them for more than three days in a row, is that side effects can occur and they are negative. So you should only take them if you need them. They are most effective, well, depending on your distance from the explosion, if you would take them right before it happened. Uh, but I, I don't think that's possible for most people. So if you take them right after it happens, you have 95% of that tank full from any type of particles that come in. So you should do what you're told to do. If something like that happens, you would want to put on your radio on the emergency band and the government will tell you what to do. 
Now, interestingly enough, if you live, I believe it's within 10 miles of a nuclear reactor, um, they either routinely give this out to the population, these pills, or you can go to a pharmacy and they will give you the potassium iodide pills free of charge. So what's the shelf life? Well, um, it's printed on the back of your package, but as you can see by this package, hard to read. So when you get it, you might want to put a tape on here what the actual expiration date is. Generally when you buy them, they're about five uh, years from when you buy them. Um, people say that you can go over that time because it's actually uh, a salt and that doesn't expire. Personally, if we ever need them, I'd want to make sure that they are within the usage date and not expired. So I'd rather not take that chance. Well, that's it. I think I covered just the facts um, as I know it. And again, like I said, always do your own research. But I'm curious, comment below, how many of you have these? Do you have enough for all your family members? And do you know when and how you should use them? This is Prepper Potpourri saying, please subscribe, share the knowledge, and as always, thank you so much for your support.